Welcome to my video on body image and disordered eating in sport climbing. I'm Jonas Klotz and I've been both climbing and bouldering for nearly six years. I study movement and sport science at the Philips University in Marburg and also have been a coach at the local climbing gym for five years, which I'm standing in front of today. In this video I want to discuss the topic of body image in sport climbers and show its implications on them. It's structured into four short chapters. The first chapter will give you an introduction to sport climbing and body image. In the second chapter we will analyze body images of several sport climbers, how they view themselves and how they experience their climbing. We look at studies around body image and disordered eating in sport climbers. The third chapter is going to address problems in body images that result in various issues like eating disorders, but will also show possible solutions. The last chapter concludes the video and puts it in perspective. Chapter 1. Introduction to sport climbing and body image. Let's start with an introduction to sport climbing. Sport climbing is a form of free climbing that can be performed both on rock and artificial walls. The free as in free climbing, means utilizing only holds and footholds in the climbing movement. Sport climbing in general can be seen as a risk-minimized development of different climbing forms due to utilizing permanently fixed anchors that are placed in a way to prevent injury and give climbers the ease of mind required to fully engage in their climb, combining power, mobility, endurance and technique in a skillful way. Subsequent of reliable anchors, Falling is perceived as part of the sport and inevitable when climbing at peak performance and in improving the individual climbing ability. The objective of the sport climber is reaching the top hold of, usually, a 20 to 40 meter long route, a single pitch climb that doesn't necessarily end on top of a wall without weighting the rope. The sport climbing symptomatic mindset is to constantly improve the climbing ability level while developing an aesthetic climbing style. This is part of the scene inherent performance comparison with others, but especially with themselves. Participants rate others by criteria such as aesthetics, imposingness and reputation of the individual climber as well as the course of the route. Leaving the personal comfort zone to expand your capabilities in order to climb even more difficult routes, regardless of success, is a meaningful criteria for the attribution of participation in the climbing scene. The most meaningful entity of social interaction within the climbing scene is the roped party between usually two climbers. They rely on each other, ideally check their safety relevant actions and motivate one another. Transferring to the topic of body image and disordered eating, sport climbing is a sport in which leanness and low body weight are commonly considered advantages. We will later find out what implications this can have for the participants in the sport. Next. I will introduce you to the term body image. The definition of body image is a controversial topic in scientific literature with lots of diverging formulations. Body image is often referred to as a multifactorial construct of perception, thoughts, feelings and actions of the body, especially in terms of looks. Generally speaking, body image consists of the ways people view themselves, negative and positive. It is a continuum that can vary day by day. As mentioned before, in this chapter we will first analyze the body images of several sport climbers from a study on body image in rock climbers, how they view themselves and how they experience their climbing. Afterwards, we have a look at a study on disordered eating prevalence in sport lead climbers. Let's look at the 2017 research study on body image in rock climbers by Cameron et al. While body image in elite athletes in other leanness focused sports has been broadly researched, this study is the first on sport climbing, especially non-competitive climbers. They viewed 10 sport climbers with a minimum of one year of climbing experience, both male and female between the age 19 and 46, on their experiences, feelings and perceptions surrounding body image and their ideal body within the sport. In those interviews, four main themes were identified. Climbing experiences, health and fitness, climbing body culture and body image and self-esteem. In the body image experience of the participants, levels of climbing such as competitive or recreational were an important factor. For the recreational athletes, the influence of sport climbing on body image was overwhelmingly positive, especially in building confidence and trust in one's body. The participants also found 
that this confidence transferred into the social interactions outside of the sport. In contrast, the competitive athletes in the study seem to put more pressure on themselves with regards to performance and fitting the body type ideal for climbing. The two participants engaging in climbing competitions framed sport climbing with a negative body talk and unhealthy weight behaviors. Both of the competition climbers had previously been diagnosed with eating disorders coupled with overtraining and negative self-talk. Performance and climbing levels were directly related to the perceived self-worth in more competitive climbers. So, while a successful ascent led to a positive body image and self-thoughts, a failure made them think about losing weight. Also, when seeing someone climb on a higher ability level, this didn't make them evaluate this person's climbing technique and performance. It made them feel a need to lose weight to reach a higher climbing grade. For the mental and physical fitness theme, participants reported an assumption of feeling a bit better about themselves if they were slightly more fit. Vice versa, negative feelings can transfer to every aspect of life. Both physical and mental health play important roles in body image and experiences of climbers. Negative feelings about body and climbing ability lead to a decreased self-efficiency, which then affects the climbing performance, a self-fulfilling prophecy. Body image and climbing culture. The interviews revealed a particular and unique body culture within sport climbing that some climbers became immersed in when they entered the sport. This body culture encompasses the value climbers place on certain ideals such as lean muscle mass, strength to weight ratio and low body fat for optimal performance and is specific to sport climbing. While the strength to weight ratio was a prominent performance ideology to every participant, they also found different types of climbing to favor different body types. The body-centric presentation of climbing idols and climbing media also has a significant influence of some of the participants, as well as outdated climbing literature emphasizing a certain body type and unhealthy performance diets. Coaches emphasizing the importance of weight also were an issue for the body image. Body image and self-esteem. The climbing body culture is complex and holds very specific body type ideals for optimal performance. This has important implications for body image and self-esteem. Participants' body image varied greatly based on their subjective interpretation of their body's shape, size and function, both within the sport context and without. This was further compounded by community and peer support within the sport climbing culture. The peer support within climbing, societal ideals, greatly influenced their body image and self-esteem. The seemingly perfect body images within media negatively influenced the body image, while peer support positively impacted it. Participants also emphasized a distinction between their past and present feelings of self-esteem, which seemed to improve over time. For example, when old clothes didn't fit anymore due to growing muscles, they took the need to change to a bigger size as a sign of progress, instead of getting upset about it. The greatest body image concerns were expressed by the youngest age range, 19 to 25, while those in the middle age range, 26 to 33, expressed fewer concerns and reflected on how concerns are more prominent in younger athletes. And participants in the highest age range, 36 to 46, predominantly expressed satisfaction and enjoyment in regards to the functionality of their bodies as it related to body image. Takeaways of the study. The study found that female rock climbers that climbed at a higher level were more likely to exhibit body dissatisfaction when reflecting on their own performance, which stemmed not only from their climbing performance, but also from how they viewed their own bodies in comparison to what they considered to be the ideal body for sport climbing. Though many participants reported instances of body dissatisfaction in relation to fitness level and a desire to improve health and fitness to levels previously experienced, these were only momentary or fleeting thoughts for most. These thoughts did not seem to be reflective of the participants' overall views of themselves. Furthermore, these thoughts had many complex influences, such as society, media and peers, but climbing did not seem to have a strong negative influence for most of the participants. The majority of participants experienced a positive psychological effect of climbing in relation to body image. It was described 
how participation and achievement in the sport help to build confidence and trust in their bodies and improve their self-efficiency which transferred into their social interactions outside of the sport. The study suggests that adolescent rock climbers may be at an especially high risk of experiencing body image issues, engaging in unhealthy training or eating behaviors and developing eating disorders. As disordered eating is one of the biggest concerns in body image issues, I will now introduce you to the study by Joubert et al. on the prevalence of disordered eating among international sport lead rock climbers. 498 individuals from 33 countries with a mean age of 32 plus minus 9 identified as sport lead climbers and 42.1% of them reported an advanced climbing level of at least 6C for women and 7A plus for men in French sport grades. 77% of them were male. Reported climbing levels ranged from 2 plus in the lower grades to 9B in the higher elite. For both female and male sport lead climbers, there was a general trend of climbers having a lower body mass index, climbing at higher ability levels. The study found an overall 8.6% disordered eating prevalence. 4.2% reported to have been treated for an eating disorder. For the 383 male sport climbers, disordered eating prevalence was 6.3%. The highest prevalence was found in the lower grades at 14.3%. However, a much higher disordered eating prevalence was seen in the female climbers with an overall prevalence of 16.5% and an astonishing 42.9% in female elite and high elite climbing ability levels 7C and above. For males, the G-square analysis revealed no significant associations between disordered eating and climbing ability. However, for the females it suggested that disordered eating was indeed associated with climbing ability. Chapter 3 Problems and Solutions The study by Joubert et al. supports the results of Cameron et al. as they relate symptoms and potential drivers of disordered eating in female athletes to body dissatisfaction, exposure to high body standards, self-imposed expectations of athletic perfection and a belief in the inverse relationship between body size and performance. Furthermore, constant evaluation of physical appearance by coaches and peers can lead to negative body image if these standards are not met. Consequences of disordered eating, even without progression to a diagnosable eating disorder, include long-term negative psychological and physiological ramifications. From a performance perspective, Disordered eating has been associated with unhealthy physical activity behaviors and relative energy deficiency in sport, a term used to describe a syndrome in active individuals who display compromised physiological functioning. The main cause is thought to be energy deficiency and may include impairments of metabolic rate, menstrual function in women, bone tissue depredation, a weakened immune system and susceptibility to injury. A few recent studies suggest that rock climbers may not be consuming adequate energy to support optimal health. It is possible that some of the participants, with or without disordered eating, did not consume enough energy, which may lead to poor bone density, increased risk of injury and compromised health. Solutions The study by Cameron et al. demands developing strategies within the climbing community to address concerns like body dissatisfaction, unhealthy behaviors and clinical and subclinical eating disorders. Joubert et al. find climbing federations could be more vocal regarding the health risks, symptoms and prevalence of disordered eating in elite class climbers by educating coaches, trainers and athletes. Recreational and elite athletes alike should seek professional guidance on establishing and maintaining a healthy diet appropriate to their discipline and climbing performance level. The Austrian Climbing Association already took actions on the matter by implementing a minimum body mass index rule in their national competition climbing rules and regulations. Athletes below their age group's BMI minimum can't compete and those who exceed the BMI minimum by less than one need a doctor's health confirmation. Conclusion. I conclude, everybody has its own optimal performance weight that will be reached with the right amount of training and the healthy diet containing the essential nutrients. 
going way below or above will decrease the performance. To stress on weight is narrow minded as climbing performance is complex and has many components. Climbing is a beautiful inclusive sport for everyone to enjoy no matter the climbing level. In all competitiveness this fun in the movement should be more emphasized as the body culture of climbing presents a barrier to plus sized people keeping them away from the sport. For more valuable insights I recommend you to also watch the documentary Light by Caroline Treadway featuring famous climbers like Emily Harrington, Megan Martin, Nina Williams and Kai Leitner. Beth Rodden also wrote several articles on her long time struggles. I'll put the links in the description. It is important to be aware about the implications of body image and I hope to have contributed to educating on the matter. If you like this video, please subscribe to my channel.